Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. I am here to help you with a nice, easy recipe for unleavened bread. This is the um, second year I've been making this actual recipe, and last year it was delicious. So I'm so excited to be able to share this recipe with you guys. Again, it is super easy, super simple. I'm gonna go through all the steps and all the tools that you're going to need. All right, so here are the ingredients that we're going to be using. We have all-purpose unbleached flour. We wanna make sure that the flour that we're using for unleavened bread is unbleached. To be honest with you, anything that's bleached is not good for you. So if you're using flour or any kind of other, you know, ingredients that are like that from the grocery store, make sure that you always try to get unbleached. So we're gonna do unbleached flour. And we're also gonna have almond milk. So we're gonna be doing two cups of unbleached flour one cup of almond milk and you can use any kind of dairy milk that you like if you don't use nut milk then you can obviously use your you know whole milk or your two percent or your one percent milk we're also going to be using some extra virgin olive oil um, honey and also a teaspoon of onion powder garlic powder and salt and i also have some brown sugar here that we're going to be adding as well and you're going to just need a bowl a nice big mixing bowl and you're also gonna be using a rolling pin to make sure that we're rolling everything out. All right, let's get started. Tools that you're going to need are just a rolling pin, a spoon, and your mixing bowl. So make sure you have a nice big mixing bowl. And if you don't have a rolling pin last year, honestly, I used a bottle of wine with plastic wrap wrapped around it. So use anything that you can. You should have wine because it is Passover. So you can also substitute that if you don't have a rolling pin. All right, so we have our two cups of flour in the bowl. So we wanna go ahead and make like a little reservoir in, in the middle of the um, flour, because this is where you're gonna dump your milk ingredients into, your milk mixture. So you wanna kinda give it, you wanna like create like a little reservoir in the middle. And right here we have one cup of almond milk and I've already mixed together the salt, the sugar, the onion powder, and garlic powder. I actually uh, took away a little bit of onion powder, so I'm doing one teaspoon of garlic powder and like, mm, I guess like a half of a teaspoon of onion powder so it's not too strong. And then I chopped up some thyme and some rosemary for the herb. So we are going to go ahead and dump that into the milk. Mix this up. And the reason why we want to mix this up is because if you took your milk and your seasoning separately and you put it in here, then it's all just going to sit in one place. We want to make sure that the seasonings go all throughout the bread. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to mix it first and then pour it directly into your bowl here. And we're going to mix it together. And mix it slowly so it doesn't get everywhere. <laughs> but you're gonna mix it nice and slowly here. Pull all of the flour from the sides. And unleavened bread doesn't have any leavening agents in it, so this is a more tacky bread. So you're gonna continue to pull from the sides. You're gonna need all of this flour. Away. You're going to need all of this flour, so continue to mix. But well, you see how that's getting tacky like that? So go ahead and continue to mix together. And at this point, I'm going to stop because I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil that's in the laws. The Most High says to make this unleavened bread with olive oil. And I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, probably about a quarter of a cup. I didn't measure it, but I've been cooking so long that, you know, but for you guys, do a quarter of a cup and also a drizzle of honey. So we're gonna get a nice scoop here because this honey is gonna come through along with the brown sugar. Now, last year, I didn't try honey. I got adding honey from uh, my girl that I speak to online, she, uh, Sarah uh, Malathia. And she added honey to hers, and I really like that. And I said, you know what, this year, 
gonna add a little honey. So let's go ahead and keep mixing. Mix it around, and we're gonna take this out and um, mix with our hands, but I just wanna kinda get as much as I can mixed right here in the bowl. So you see how that's starting to look? Bring that all together. Continue to mix that up. And kind of do a folding over motion, kind of come around and fold into it. But just make sure you don't do it too fast. So do it like a fold over motion. This actually is going to sit for about five minutes. So if you see that it's a little bit watery, like mine is, I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. So once I add a little bit more flour, I'm gonna mix this up because I want this to be a little bit more tacky. So once you take it out, you can actually work with it in its actual dough. So I'm gonna add a little bit more flour, which is fine. We started out with two cups, um, but you know, you can kind of give and take and you know, you're kind of, you know, doing this, you know, you're not an expert. So you're just like moving along as you will. So if you wanna change different things, you can. If you don't like all of these different ingredients, um, if you don't wanna add honey, or if you don't wanna add like the onion powder or the garlic powder, then don't. So it's all up to you. This is your recipe to customize. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more flour and we're gonna let this sit for five minutes. So this dough has been sitting for about five minutes now. And you see how this looks? I added a little bit more flour and now it's kind of come together. So we're gonna remove this out of here and we're gonna start the kneading process. So we're gonna take some flour and make sure your counters are clean. <laughs> I have to say that, but clean off your counters because you wanna use this space. And then also you wanna make sure that your hands are clean. So go ahead and sprinkle around flour. And we're gonna knead this flour to knead the dough. And you're gonna need a lot of flour. And you're gonna to continue to add if you need to, but go ahead and add some flour all over. And we're gonna pull this out and we're gonna use, get all of this dough from around these edges, right? So let's go ahead and get this out of here. And again, like I said, it's gonna be really tacky because it doesn't have any leavening agents in it. This is super tacky. <laughs> so let's get this out. That's what you want though. You see that elasticity? That's exactly what you want. So let's put this over here. And let's get this with some flour on it. There we go. See, you see that here? Look at that. That's what you want. That's what you're looking for here. So let's go ahead and start working around this dough. Use this, so we're going to knead it. So you wanna kinda of press it to get all these air pockets out. And you're gonna do a folding over and like pressing motion fold it and press it and get all these air pockets out of here and we're going to do this for about five minutes put this up you can continue to add flour but get all these air pockets out and we're going to knead this for about five minutes and we're going to add a little bit more flour The first time I did this, <laughs> it was crazy about how worried I was about kneading this dough. But it's it's super simple because I'm not a baker, I'm an actual cook. There is a difference in baking and in cooking. So, but don't be worried, don't be scared about it. So get all these pockets out, these air pockets out of here. You can pick it up, play around with it. And you have to go through this process anytime you bake anything, as you guys know. Some of you might be better bakers than me, so you might be used to this process. But with any baking, flour is your friend. So we're gonna continue to add flour here, because we don't want it sticking to the counter. And you wanna go ahead and continue to knead for five minutes. So I'm gonna continue this process and we will be right back. Just keep, and you know, before I leave, I want you to be able to, if you could, you can begin to see 
all the different um, rosemary specks of thyme in there because it got everywhere because we put it in the middle of the flower so it distributed all over the place so I will be right back all right so this is exactly what you want your dough to look like you see that look how beautiful that is you can see all the different herbs that are in there it has that beautiful like glossy kind of feel so it really feels like dough and not like you know just some tacky mess it all came together so if you have to continue to add flour which i did when i was kneading it adding more flour into the board adding more flour into here please feel free to do so because you want the end result to look like this so if you feel like you're too if you feel like your bread is still too wet just add more flour so just go ahead and add more flour continue to knead it out for about five minutes and we're wanting to we want to have this type of end result so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this in plastic wrap leave it inside the bowl for one hour so this is perfect I'm so excited you guys this is beautiful so let's go ahead and get some plastic wrap Go ahead and wrap this whole thing up and we're going to let this rest for one hour this is perfect and this is all this is it this is your end result after this we're just going to be picking off little bits and rolling out the little pieces of unleavened bread that we want but this is your unleavened bread so get excited if you get to this part right go ahead and leave it in there for one hour all right so we are Finally at the finishing point. So the dough has been resting for over an hour and it looks perfect if you guys can see this. I mean, it is just a beautiful piece of bread. So now we're going to take little pieces and we're gonna break them off into our smaller portions of unleavened bread. So we're gonna add some more, count, uh, some more flour on the counter. And I'm just gonna take off, let's say probably about, about this size right here. Not too big, not too small. I'm going to do two of them. All right. And you want to roll it around just a little bit. And then I like to actually take it and move it around just a tiny bit, kind of like what people do with pizza dough. I'm do it from this side. Just like ripping this apart. <laughs> You want to be a little bit more careful than that one. So I'm going to use this one, actually. Here we go. All right. So this looks a little bit better. Don't be as rough as I was. Pull that apart just a little bit. And this will help when I'm using the actual rolling pin. So you're not just taking it from a ball and rolling it out. So kind of stretch it out just a little bit. Like I was saying before, like people do a pizza dough. I'm going to stop right there because that was about to rip cheese and then we're gonna take it I'm gonna add a little bit of flour on my rolling pin so it doesn't stick to it so we're just gonna roll it out nice and easy you don't have to make it completely perfect you just want to make it thin because I've noticed that when you actually do make larger pieces of unleavened bread that it's kind of thick and uh, the dough doesn't always get a chance to cook all the way through. So it's, you know, it's just not as kind of soft and chewy like you're used to when you eat um, flatbread. So we want to continue to roll it out so it's nice and thin. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. If you do like that and you want it to be a perfect circle, then, you know, do that. That's totally fine. Like I said, you know, no fuss. This is... You know, the Most High is just very, very happy that you're even doing this yourself. You're not going to the store and getting that bread that the Ashkenazi Jews eat. You know, we don't want that. So in the in the oven, we have a foil lined baking pan. And I have the oven on 400. Oven times vary. I have a gas stove, so my oven gets really, really hot. So 400 is really high. So I like it at 400. I'm gonna shake off some of this flour. So I like it at 400. 
Um, but uh, you kind of, you know, like I said, it may vary. So you may bring yours down just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is just drizzle this a tiny bit with olive oil and with salt. So I'm gonna drizzle that a little bit with olive oil. I have this little painter right here. My husband is a artist. So I have a little free paint brush that I took from him. All right, so that's exactly how it's going to look. So I have the baking pan again in the pan, in the oven on 400 with like a little bit of oil on the bottom of the pan. And you do that for about five minutes so the pan can get nice and hot. And the reason why you wanna do that is because you want it to cook evenly and get a nice golden brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven. It's gonna be about three minutes per side. We're gonna do it one side. Um, I mean, sorry, on the first side, then we're gonna flip it. Let me add a little salt here. We're gonna flip it and then bring it to the other side and also let that cook for three minutes. And I will show you the end product in a second. So I have my two pieces of unleavened bread here. This one I rolled out a little too thin. You see how it has these crispy edges? So make sure that you don't roll it out too, too thin. This one I didn't. And this one I think came out perfect. You see how it's golden brown? You can still see the salt that's on there. And we're gonna tear this off. And you can see how chewy this is. You see that? Mm. So good. It's also pliable and it's so warm and so good. So you guys, that is it. I hope that you have your own beautiful outcomes of your unleavened bread for Passover. Send me some videos on Instagram if you want to, just to kind of let me know. Pictures on Instagram if you want to, just to kind of let me know um, how yours turned out. And hopefully this video was very helpful to you. It is going to be up for you guys to enjoy this video, hopefully for years to come, for many Passovers to come. I am very excited to be able to share this recipe with you guys and happy Passover and Feast of Eleven Bread. Shalom.